Welcome back. So, for people who are long-term uh, viewers of this channel, years and years ago, videos on this channel were nowhere near as organized, and it used to be just something would happen, I'd make a video on it. This is one of those cases. This is why this video is going to be coming up kind of out of nowhere for some. But I, I got to talk about this. This is one of those things where I'm like, seriously, what are people talking about? I keep hearing about how, well, Dubas wasn't, you know, he clearly he didn't want to stay in Toronto. You can't keep him around with the way he talked in that press conference. That's just awful. A horrible look for a general manager. And and so I, I, I watched that press conference before doing this video. And I watched the Pittsburgh one as well. But what really caused me to decide, okay, i got to do a video on this, is a tweet from Stan Fischler today. So let's let's read that out first. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a Toronto guy named Hashtag Dubas, I don't know why he's hashtagging Dubas, not just putting Kyle Dubas, but all right, uh, told a very gullible media, dash, dash, me too, dash, dash, that the only, only, all caps on that only there, team he wants to work for is called at Maple Leafs. So he tagged the Maple Leafs in it. I was near tears listening to his heartfelt loyal to Leafs blather. This Mr. Almost Dash Honesty now is in Pittsburgh. Ugh. How dare he? How dare he? How how dare you, sir? And and there are certainly some people online that are echoing this like, how dare he? I can't believe it. All right, so let's go through it. Let's go through his press conference in Toronto. I'm going to go through his press conference in Pittsburgh. And I'm, I'm going to do my best to connect the dots because... To me, it's not this huge, big deal. Like, oh, I can't... Can you see how he betrayed the team that fired him? Yeah. Anyways, um, as, as soon as you're fired, as far as I'm concerned, as soon as you're fired, whatever you said before you got fired, eh. So, and, and that's my honest opinion on it is, eh. Like, as soon as he's fired, everything changes, right? So, he starts off saying he will speak to Shanahan and the team after talking to his wife and family. And he talked a number of times in this press conference about how things were hard for his family. And I know people are going to say, well, you get all kinds of money. Who cares? That's how you end up single. So for him to say his family was having a hard time, we are not in a position to say they weren't. We're not in a position to say, well, he's lying because we, we, don't, we don't know this. And I have no reason to think that he'd lie about his wife and kids having a hard time with it, right? So he talks again about it was a taxing year on the family. So he throws that out there. And that's why he was hesitant. He you need to sit down and have a talk. And I've seen people say, well, he would have had that conversation with his wife. Not necessarily. When you're the Toronto Maple Leafs GM, I would imagine you're really busy all the time. And so the idea of, will I come back next year? You don't want to get into that until the playoffs are over. Ideally, you win the Stanley Cup and discuss it after that. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of day-to-day -day stuff going on. And then once the playoffs are done, you sit down and discuss it. And you look at the picture and go, do we still see ourselves here or not? I don't think that's horrible. So he then says, I'm responsible. When they asked him why Shanahan wasn't there, we now know that Brendan Shanahan basically instructed him, you probably don't want to do this press conference, and he did it anyways. And that this was this was a cause of some friction between the organization and Kyle Dubas, right? And was part of the reason why, you know, he ends up out of work and on top of the stuff he said. But where he said, I'm responsible and it's on me, I made the trades, he's right. He's 100% right. And he, he didn't, from the way that he put it, it sounded like he didn't want to seem like he was having Shanahan there as a shield. He's like, bring it on, it's on me. Um, and then he says, maybe the path needs to shift. So being that the goal is still the same, you want to win the Stanley cup, but maybe the path of how you're going to get there, his idea for how that path looked, that maybe he needed to make some alterations. So again, he's not saying this as, as a person who's saying, eh, I want a lot more money. Yes. There were contract negotiations that were in here as well. And sure. Maybe he wanted more money. Maybe it was after he talked to his wife and his wife said, look, you know, and, and pointed out certain things that told him for the amount of money he was getting paid by Toronto that it didn't work, right? And again, I'm not going to try to get in his head and decide what he was thinking necessarily. And I'm not in a position to judge him on any of that as well. Uh, he wouldn't commit to staying without talking to family first. So again, he's asked about, you know, staying. Will you commit? No, oh, I want to sit down and talk to my family. He repeats it was a hard year for them. So he's not saying, I don't want to be here. He's not saying, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. He's saying, I want to sit down. I want to talk to my family. And then, 
you know, I'll, I'll decide, I'll make my declaration. And apparently, to the Leafs board, well, that's, that's disloyalty right there. And I've said this before, and I'll say it in a video here. If, if I got fired from any job where I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to go anymore, I would have lost so many jobs so quickly. Um, and, and if you had walked into almost any job I had and had the employer say, look, if you're not sure you want to be here, you need to go, that would have cleaned the place out really, really quickly. Um, and then this is the part where people get really upset, right? He states, it will be Toronto and nowhere else. And he says, I won't pop up somewhere else next week. So here's how I take that, right? I take it as he means as general manager, he's not going to pop up somewhere else. He's also saying, I'm not just playing around here. I'm not, you know, trying to trying to get something from Toronto and then I'm just going to go somewhere else. This, this statement to me is nullified once the Toronto Maple Leafs fire him. Because again, nobody at this point said, well, what if you get fired? Will that change your statement? My guess is... He'd be like, well, we would cross that bridge if it came to it. But we, we didn't have any idea that Dubas being fired was going to be the result of this at the time. I didn't see anybody saying, well, he needs to be fired. Um, he talks about his temper, the water bottle throw, the incident with the Tampa Bay Lightning fans. He saw everyone taking out their phones in Tampa. And you know what? A GM being passionate and, and losing it. Um, there's, a, there's a president of, of a team in Boston, Cam Neely. You don't want to be around him when he's mad either. Um, he he tends to kind of lose it in the press box. I still, I you know, if Cam Neely's charging, I'm diving out of the way. I might just jump into a trash chute if it means that's the only way to get out of his way. So I don't think that him being that passionate is a bad thing. I don't think he should be swearing at fans. I don't think he should be. But in the moment, he's a man of passions. And he says, you know, he's an emotional guy. And I, I think that for us as fans, wouldn't we rather see a general manager that cares than one that just sits there and when that game-winning goal goes in, just pops another piece of gum and gets up and walks out of the, the press box or out of the, the, the president's box or GM's box, however you want to look at it. So his temper is out there, and I'm sure we'll see it in Pittsburgh this year too. Uh, he praised the coaches and the players for adapting to the deadline additions. So this was where... When they asked him about, you know, all the guys who came in, came in at the deadline and how do you feel they did? And he says, yeah, I, the players did really well to bring them in and welcome them and, and get them acclimated. And the coaches did a great job of adding them. We've talked before about how, you know, it takes some time for a player to adjust to a new organization. And with most of Toronto's additions at the deadline, they did pretty well. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, honestly, played well. Uh, Lafferty, I thought, played well. Gustafson didn't play very much, but... I mean, so there's not really much to go on there. But I thought they did a good job. I did. I, I thought it was uh, some solid work by him at the deadline, and they they did get out of the first round. But that's the thing, too. He disagrees with the narrative the team needed to win a round. He said he heard that, and he said, no, our goal is to win the Stanley Cup. One round isn't good enough. That's what you want to hear from a general manager. Um, he talks about the team's lack of scoring in the second round, that they weren't able to get beyond two goals in the game. And... You know, very honest about how they need to figure this out and, and straighten it out. Um, and he says he's either going to be the Leafs GM or he's going to take time off. Uh, he said that to Pierre Lebrun when he was asked. And he wouldn't answer on the trading of core players. He didn't want to get into who might stay and who might go. Because again, you don't want to give the press this, this red meat that they can just tear into with, well, he said this, so that means. So you have to be really careful what you're saying, right? And I would say that of all of the media in the NHL, Toronto, if they're not the one you have to be most careful with what you say, uh, they're close. Um, I think with Montreal, there's some, some, some there, almost any Canadian market really, where a general manager could come out and say something completely innocuous and the media could go, well, there's this one line and if we use this, everybody's going to be talking about it. I saw nothing in that press conference from Kyle Dubas in re-watching it today that I feel, personally, to me, should have led to his firing. I saw nothing. I saw a man that was still not all that happy about the way the season ended. A man who wanted to talk to his family about what the, what the plan going forward is, which is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with a man asking his wife, so what do you think we should do? Um... I'm I'm where I am now on this set in part because this was done in concert with my wife, right? 
So in, in various moves that have happened, it's been us who have discussed. It is us who have agreed. And thankfully, you know, the channel's growth has been great. And we've made smart decisions. We've, we've made smart decisions jointly. And it wasn't something we did overnight. Now, before we moved to this house, if somebody had asked, well, how long are you going to live in this house? Would it, my answer would have been, I don't know, as long as, we, long as we can. This is a great home. And then we had the opportunity to move here. Now, for Kyle Dubas, when he's being asked about, well, would you go anywhere else? To me, it's, I'm not using this as leverage to go somewhere else. That's how I took it. And he didn't. He didn't use this as leverage to go somewhere else. He didn't talk to the Penguins until he was already fired, right? So the way that it works with the Penguins and, and the press conference that was today, uh, first off, the, the, the number one thing that he mentions right off the bat is that the Penguins showed the family around the city. So the wife and kids were shown around the city, and I'm sure that they were, you know, made to feel comfortable. Very likely, because this happens a lot with the NHL, not just Pittsburgh, but you show them, here's where, you know, players live, here's, you know, kids can go to school here. If you want a good residential area, look at this part, that kind of thing, right? Um, he touched base with Mike Sullivan and Sidney Crosby before taking the job as well. And it sounds like in the press conference there that, you know, Sullivan's job is safe. And he believes in the core players there. Now, I know people are going to say, well, of course he has to say that. Well, yes, but, you know, at the very least, he sounded sincere in all this. And that's where Leaf fans say, well, he sounded sincere last week. Then he got fired, uh, which changes everything. I don't think people understand. It changes everything, right? Once you get fired, eh, all bets are off. Because it's like, all right, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take another job. You're fired. I, maybe I will take another job. Maybe, maybe Pittsburgh sounds pretty good. Um, so he's going to be the interim general manager until July. And there's a reason for that. And I know people are looking at the interim GM thing and they're snagging on that and going, see, he is going to be the general manager. He lied to us. No. Um, he is basically saying that there's a lot of guys he wants to talk to about the GM position. And it sounds like whoever he has in mind, they're already, they're under contract to another team until the end of June. So... Now, if, if it's somebody in Florida's organization or Vegas's organization, obviously you wouldn't be allowed to talk to them right now, right? So, so you, you would not be given permission as they're going into the final to yank somebody out of that organization. So that could be part of it. And he just, he wants to have access to the right people. Um, so again, I don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, he talked about the draft, about the, the long-term future. There was a lot of talk about the long-term vision for Pittsburgh and keeping them uh, in contention now and, and turning things around while still making sure that you're looking to the future, which I think Pittsburgh has been short-sighted in recent seasons. They trade away all these prospect draft picks, you know, and, and I don't think that's helped them. So that, it looks like, should be coming to a stop. Uh, he's betting on the team's ability to become a contender again. So he was asked about, you know, well, is, is this team going to be able to do it? And he said, yes. Uh, he said, I don't bet against Malkin, Crosby, Latang, a team coached by Sullivan. And and there's some truth to that. I've said for years, I don't bet against the Penguins. I'm still not betting against the Penguins. When we get to uh, talking about next season, I won't be surprised if, if I look at Pittsburgh's lineup going into next season and say, you know what, they're probably going to get back to the playoffs. Um, he has opinions. Uh, but he's going to rely on staff for feedback as well. So he made it clear that as general manager with the Toronto Maple Leafs, he kept tabs on every team in the East. He had he had copious amounts of notes on every team in the East. At least that's the way that he phrased it. And uh, yeah, he, he seems to have some knowledge of, of Pittsburgh and maybe some organizational strengths and weaknesses, but he's going to talk to the staff. He's He was very complimentary of the staff, both above and below where his job is now. Um, talked up analytics and integrating them into all facets of the organization while also adding he has not been in the organization long enough. He said, I've been here 15 minutes. Sounds about right. And saying, I don't know with the organization how entrenched the analytics are and, and what he has to do. But he basically said that analytics is part of it, right? That it should be part of every part of the organization. And I agree with them on that. You know, analytics should be integrated into your team's approach. It shouldn't be the only driving force behind a team's decisions. But I, I do think that it's a useful tool. Um, he also said he's relying on the staff uh, on pending UFA Tristan Jari. So he's asked about the goaltending and basically said 
he'll talk to Andy Kyoto, who is the goaltending coach, and that they're going to talk about the UFA market, he with others in, in, the, in the organization, and look at whether Jari is the best option for next year, uh, or if there's somebody else they might be able to pick up. I didn't see it as alarming. I saw it as being open-minded, like we're willing to keep Jari on as the starter. I didn't think there was anything wrong with his statement that if, if they can upgrade the goaltending, they will. I, I think that should be good news for Penns fans, right? Um, and then he said the wife talked him into meeting with the Penguins and basically said, you know, you can sit, but this opportunity may not come up again, right? The Pittsburgh Penguins right now we're looking for a president of hockey operations. The job was there. And he, he talked about how great the team was and how great the, the guys were. And she told him, if these people are as great as you think they are, we should probably take this, right? Uh, his kids are ages six and two. So something else that his wife said to him was, uh, and her name's Shannon, so I'm not getting into that because my name being the same just makes it weird. But um, it basically said, moving now makes sense. The kids are young. You want to make sure if you're going to make a move, you do it while they're still very young. Uh, so it's easier for them to acclimate. She's probably right on that note as well, right? Six and two, they should be able to acclimate pretty well. Um, but yeah, it, it made sense. And he kept talking about how great the organization was. So for Kyle Dubas, I don't think him having a job in Pittsburgh is a snipe at the Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't think that it's proof that he was lying last week and what a horrible person he is. I, I don't see it. I think that he took a job that he thought was a good job. One that he he likely, when he sat down for this press conference, he had no idea this was going to happen. And it's a job that may not have been there later. You know, he's still on the East Coast. He's, he's still in that conference. He knows that conference well. And it's a team that has built-in superstars there already. And it's a different kind of challenge. This Instead of going back to another team that hasn't been able to get over the hump, now he's going to a team that has... A team that's won five Stanley Cups since 1991 and are looking to build back to that rather than Toronto where they haven't won a Stanley Cup since 1967 and there's been struggles to, to win in the playoffs. Now, Pittsburgh hasn't won a round in the playoffs since 2018 either. So I've seen a lot of comments about, oh, well, they'll be out in the first round. I, I don't know that people necessarily i know there's a lot of negativity towards kyle but yeah when gms switch jobs you have no idea how they're going to do in the new location sometimes it works out great sometimes it doesn't right i use don waddell as the example don waddell had a nightmarish existence uh and and experience in in atlanta at the very least it was nightmarish to watch from the outside and yet in carolina it has just worked waddell's had a really really good run he signed the right players he's made some good trades and Carolina is a contender every year. So when you're in one organization compared to another, it's a completely different setup. You know, the the, the guys who are going to be giving Dubas advice and uh, the way this organization is put together in Pittsburgh, completely different than in Toronto. And, you know, he was flanked on either side by members of management, and I, I felt like they did a pretty good job. I, I thought it was pretty well done. So uh, there's my opinion on it. I, I do think that with Dubas, this was a matter of what what is best for him and the family. So while everybody's talking, oh, Kyle, 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 um, I don't know how long it's going to take before people point the finger at his wife and say, well, it's her fault. He's not the general manager anymore because she put all this doubt in his head. But that does tend to happen with hockey stuff. Uh, we all remember Chris Pronger, uh, the Edmonton breakup and all that. So at some point in time, that may very well. And of course, Gretzky with the Oilers. So with the Oilers. Anyways, so, because everybody, a lot of people blame Janet Gretzky when he got traded to the LA Kings, which it had, it had very little to do with Janet Gretzky at all, really. Um, it was just the Oilers made that deal, and then retroactively people decided, well, it's Janet's fault that he's gone, uh, which wasn't fair to her. But at any rate, there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Um, I do wish Kyle the best in Pittsburgh. I think that there's still a decent team there, and I think with the right moves in the offseason, it could work out. There's a lot of UFAs on that list. They do have some cap space this summer. He talked about, he said, $20 million in cap space approximately. 
So, I mean, it, it can be retooled on the fly here in Pittsburgh, and we'll see what he does. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.